G'day aspiring engineers. In this video I'm going to explain to you the different coloured lines in Fusion 360. You've probably seen the black ones, the light blue ones and purple ones maybe. This is a revised version of number 6 in that series of 16 basic tutorials in Fusion 360. Next time we're going to learn about the right click menu and some gestures. And of course there's still a lot more of these common features, that is features that are common to a lot of engineering parts. We're going to be looking at linear patterns as well as revolved patterns. We're going to look at some revolved extrusions. We'll cover the basics and that'll get you going. So welcome to Future Engineering. The future starts now. Here's Fusion 360. And as usual, let's turn on the point of origin so that we can see what's going on. Let's also make sure that we've got the timeline showing at the bottom of our screen. Right click at the top of the browser and down the bottom here it says capture design history. That makes the timeline show at the bottom of the screen here. Make sure that that's on. Then of course we'll do the first thing that we always do and that is save our work and we'll call this one part 6 of 16 and this is the revised version. The first thing we need to do as usual is start a sketch and we'll choose the plane that is between the blue and the red axis and you can see on the view cube this is the x z axis click on that reference plane it turns to face you and we're in a 2d environment we've got 2d drawing tools above and constraints let's go now remember it's a smart way to do things is to draw half of the outline so i'm just going to go near the vertical axis click and drag to get a curve and that will do for now. We have a tangential icon there showing that it's a smooth curve between this straight line and the curve but it's missing here and you can see that there's a little point there where it needs to be a very smooth curve so we'll choose the tangent constraint in the toolbar above and click once on the curve and once on the straight line which puts the little icon there and you can see that it's a very smooth transition now. And the thing that I really want to draw your attention to in this tutorial is that the line as we've drawn it is light blue. And it means I can click and drag, I can take hold of it and move it all sorts of ways. It's not constrained very much. It does have a couple of things like uh, this line here will always be horizontal because it's got a horizontal constraint, a right angle constraint here. And this is also perpendicular to this line here. So at least that much is nailed down but what we want to do is fix these endpoints to the vertical axis here so that then we can do the mirror so here's the coincident constraint click once on the end of that sketch line and then once on the vertical axis which makes it jump over the same thing will happen down here when i click on the end point of this line and the vertical axis okay i'll hit the escape key to get back to the select tool the next thing we want to do is look for the mirror tool. It's on the create drop down right here. Click on mirror. The mirror tool is now active and we need to select the objects that need to be mirrored. And so that's all of these lines. I could click on each one of them individually, but I'm going to draw a crossing which selects all of them at once. Then I'll move the focus in the field to the mirror line and the mirror line is the vertical axis. So I'll click once on that and we see the sketch is mirrored across in a kind of a free highlight so click OK and we've got a, a light blue outlining all the way around I'm going to hit the D key for the dimension tool and you'll see from the drawing that this has a radius of 20 then I'm going to make a couple of other dimensions here that we see on our drawing from the bottom of the sketch to the point of origin of that curve needs to be 70 then the total width of our sketch is 100 and you can see we've got a couple of black lines there they're fully constrained and that means I'll use a select tool I can still drag things around here but it's got a couple of dimensions on there and a, quite a few constraints and so there's not very many ways that it can move and that's I'm going to click D for dimension click once on the bottom of the sketch and then once on the point of origin of the document and that's supposed to be 30 and now our sketch is black all the way around that will do for now let's finish that sketch we see an isometric view hit the e key for extrude and 
I'm going to drag it this way uh, in a minus direction and the depth of the extrusion is 60 according to our drawing. Press OK and uh, there's the basic shape. We need another sketch for the holes and the slot. C for circle gets the circle tool going. There's one, there's another. Oh, you know, and look at that, isn't that messy? We'll clean that up a bit. Use the equal constraint, click on one and then the other. And then they're both the same size. Then click on the concentric constraint, click on one of the circles and then on the curve in the corner. Do the same with the other one, once on the circle and once on the fillet. Then hit the D key for the dimension tool. And because these are constrained to be the same, I've only got to put one of these on here and the diameter of this is 20 according to the drawing. And so there's our two whole circles in the right spot. The next thing we want to do, you can see from the drawing that we need to draw a slot here. And the slot tool is on the create drop down. And here it is. And there are quite a few of them. The first one we'll do for now center to center slot. So I'm going to draw it roughly out in space here, purposely away from where it's supposed to be because I'm going to use constraints to push it into shape. Notice that all of our outlines are black, but this slot relatively unconstrained is light blue. That means if I was to use the select tool, I can drag this thing around and do all sorts of things with it. So let's use the coincident constraint to select the center line of the slot and then the point of origin of the document to make those coincident. Click the D key to get the dimension tool and put a dimension on between the, the two center points of the slot. And you'll see from the drawing that it's 40 between those centers. I'm gonna hit the escape key so that I've got the select tool. And you'll notice that it's still blue and I can do all sorts of things with it. We need a radius dimension on this curve at the end. D for dimension. And you'll see on the drawing that the radius here is 10. Escape for the select tool. And then what have we got here? It can still move. So we need one more dimension. Hit the D key, click on the point of origin of the document and one of the points of origin of the curves in the slot, put that down below there. And uh, you can see that that needs to be half of 40, which is 20. And that turns the slot sketch black all the way around. All of the thing, all of the sketch entities now are black. Finish the sketch, hit the E key for extrude, select the face of the part. We're going to be cutting into the part. We want this to be a cut, not a, not a join or an intersect. It needs to be a cut. And the distance that it's going to go, the extent of this one is through all. So click on all, click OK. <laughs> And you can see that one didn't quite go the way we expected. So what I'm going to do is right click on the feature in the timeline, click on edit feature, cancel the selection of the profiles. And this time I'm going to select the holes and the slot. You see that it's going as cut and it's through all. Let's try that one. That's more like it. Now I did want to show you one thing. You've seen examples of blue lines, light blue lines in sketches and black lines in sketches. There's one more thing I want to show you. And to do that, I'm going to construct a reference plane out here in space, just a little bit of distance away from our part. I'm going to start a sketch on that reference plane. I'll click on that reference plane on the create menu. There's an item on the menu that says project include. The first one says project, and we're going to project some lines from the part that we've just made. I'm going to go around and select the edges and the holes and the slot. I have to select all of the lines in the slot. Click OK. And you'll notice that we have some purple lines here. If I click finish the sketch, you can see the sketch on the construction plane that I just created. And you can see that the sketch is purple. That's because it's projected geometry. It came from the other part, which is not on the same plane. Let's just hide that body for now and look again at our sketch. We'll go to edit sketch and you'll see that I've got the select tool ready and all of these things cannot be dragged around. You can't just pick something up and, and drag it out of shape. So purple is okay if you're projecting geometry. You can actually make something out of it. So I'll finish the sketch. I'm going to hit the E key. I'm going to choose this one and uh, we're going to have a new body. I'm going to uh, extrude this one out a little way. Okay. 
turn the bodies back on so that we can see them. That's how project works. And so those are the three different colors of lines that you might see in Fusion 360. Black ones, blue ones, and purple ones. So we don't need that other body. And there's our part number six in the revised tutorial. So there you go. That was part six. I'll see you next time for the revised part number seven.